Now, net zero. When I say those two words, what do you think? Do you think, yeah, cool, something we've all got to do to save the planet? Or do you think nonsense, a sham, a lie we're being sold that's going to make us all poorer? Look, we have these same fiery debates about climate change every summer now when we witness more wildfires and heat waves around the world. But yes, I know, I know, it's pouring with rain in the UK at the moment. It feels more like autumn, so global warming isn't real. And what about those historical weather patterns and El Nino, those charts people can point to to reassure themselves this is all hokum and par for the course? Because who really wants to believe that we're making the planet uninhabitable through our actions when top scientists have been warning us for years about the danger of burning fossil fuels into the atmosphere? Because it doesn't feel nice, does it, to admit that? It's scary, quite frankly, and it means we're all somehow at fault for driving cars, for taking planes and eating intensively farmed food. And we're all just trying to live a nice life, aren't we? We're only here for a short time. And things were seemingly fine up until a few years ago. Some people are struggling to pay rent now. There's a housing crisis and the cost of basic food items is going through the roof. So it's easier to just call the net zero stuff bogus or a scam or even a conspiracy to control the way we live. But I am not here to insult your intelligence like that. I know, you know, there is a difference between global climate change and the daily weather patterns here in Britain. And I know a lot of you actually care about it, even if just for a little bit. Here in Britain, I think we're generally pretty good at doing our part, taking out the recycling, listening to scientists, doing what we can to help others. And it's not like we're in control of a lot of this stuff either. It's the private companies we buy the stuff from and the politicians we vote into power. Recent polling actually showing a majority of Conservative voters considering switching to Labour think that Rishi Sunak has not done enough to tackle climate change. And as if to double down today, Prime Minister Sunak announcing more than 100 new drilling licences for oil and gas in the North Sea. A huge investment into fossil fuels at a time when other countries are turning away. The thing is, I think most of us want to keep taking planes to go on holiday, don't we? To escape this wet little island we call home. And trust me, me included, I just came back from a holiday. We want to keep driving our much-loved cars. And I think that's a, where a lot of this debate comes from. We feel attacked for our choices. So we look for a narrative that makes us feel better. And I'm not here to preach. I'm not here to make you feel better or make you feel worse about those choices. I'm in exactly the same boat as you. I just think we need to find a way to live with all this while not choosing to be stupid because we don't like the truth. If we can have some calm analysis of the facts without hysteria from either side, whether it be Just Stop Oil or the Anti-Net Zero Brigade, if we can all just stop attacking each other for the decisions we make, then we can all be better informed, make the choices we want based on that information and keep an eye on the future we're leaving behind. And I think we would all appreciate that. So what will Britain's legacy be in this debate? And is the government now moving backwards in its approach to tackling climate change? I know what I think. I'll let's see what these people think.